Design is not a linear process. The creative process is anything but linear. I know this by having been there firsthand as a creative in all kinds of creative industries. But the scientist in me wanted to make sense of it all. I knew there had to be some kind of formula or recipe to follow to help ensure that the quality of the UX design work you do is always top notch. And finally, I got it. In this video, I'll go over two main things. First, I'll walk you through the eight different phases or areas of the typical design process. I see these more as areas to focus on depending on what seems to be most relevant for the project at hand. Secondly, I'll go over my step-by-step -step UX focus checklist. It's a six-step checklist system to help you understand what area or design phase to start off with. This is a challenge for many, but by following this six-step UX process, you'll be able to quickly figure out what actions to focus on before diving into the design deliverables of a project. Let's go. kick this off, I want to start it off by explaining what the UX design process usually looks like. You have more or less these following eight phases or areas within or related to the field of UX. One, research. It's all about understanding and building empathy. Your intent is mainly to understand the problem, the users, the project, and the requirements. You can apply tons of different research methods to help formulate questions, gather, and analyze data. Two, framing. Also referred to some as analysis, defining, or planning. All of the information and insights gathered needs to be processed, defined, and help you set direction. This is the phase where you typically work with design deliverables such as task and user flows and value propositions. 3. Information architecture Before you start coming up with all these ideas, it's usually helpful to try to make sense of all the information that the site or app will consist of. Information architecture is the phase that helps you structure the information needed to be added so that it's accessible, useful, clear and findable. 4. Ideation This is where you get into the zone of brainstorming ideas and concepts. Some love to do sketches, others like to do low fidelity wireframes from the start. There is no right or wrong, whatever gets you going works. It's also useful to do some rapid prototyping in this phase too, especially if you want to do some quick user testing, which gets us to the next one. User testing is when you want to test or validate a concept or idea. Idea. Getting early feedback helps you understand what direction to go in as a next step. That's why it's crucial to be open to all kinds of ideas as you are ideating on concepts. The more, the better, and then confine them down into few select ones that you want to test and get feedback on. Now, the nitty gritty design work. Six designing, creating wireframes, turning that into high fidelity mockup designs, designing elements and components, designing for edge cases and various states, responsive views, adding visual design or the UI, designing for interactions, and also creating high level prototypes, which in turn can be used to explain the design experience to team members, but also for another phase. Seven, usability testing. So the difference between user testing and usability testing is that during user testing, you want to validate a product, a feature, or a proof of concept. You want insights that help you understand if a product would serve value or not. Whereas in usability testing, you are testing just that, how easy it is to use a product or a feature. Your objective is to test the simplicity or complexity of the interactions and the overall user experience. And last but not least, eight, documentation. Organizing, structuring, and systemizing all of your work is not only a good habit to have, but in my opinion, it's the key difference between a seasoned professional and a junior. By spending time on documenting your design and thought process, you make it easier for other designers to pick up where you left off, but also help communicate your design to engineers and other people within your team. Communication is a key skill which will be half of the work that you do as a designer.
Checklists help you be better at what you do. It helps you improve the quality of your work and create consistency in your deliveries. With the extreme amount of information that we're exposed to, it's impossible to remember everything, especially under difficult or high pressure conditions. I was inspired to create a UX focus checklist after reading the Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande, where the author, who's also a surgeon, have spent tons of time studying how checklists have been implemented in many industries, all to help ensure that professionals don't oversee easily missed but still critical items. Here's my six step UX focus checklist, which will help you understand what key deliverables or exercises to run before you start getting into the design phase. One, goal. Is it clear to you what you and your team aim to accomplish? If not, define and understand the key objectives, define key results and formulate the vision. Two, understanding. Are the pain points and challenges well understood? If not, start by identifying the user challenges. By doing primary and secondary research, you'll have enough insights to create a user journey map, an empathy map, and user personas. Interviewing people in the market, the users, members of the team, or subject matter experts will give you super valuable information. Three, framing. As the pain points are understood, are you able to frame or articulate them simply? If not, run exercises that help you explain the challenges well. Look up exercises like how might we's and value propositions. Check out my video on value propositions linked in the descriptions below. Four, ideation. If all of the above three steps are checked off, you are ready to start conceptualizing high level ideas. Ask yourself if you have enough rough ideas and concepts for a potential solution. If not, continue to do some quick sketching, collaborate with other people, create a mood board of references and inspiration. Keep yourself in the creative zone until you have enough ideas. Five, evaluate. Now it's time for you to evaluate and stress test your ideas and concepts. Which of them withstands the limitations and requirements of the project? If you haven't done it yet, running user tests is a great way to help get feedback on your early design concepts, but also make sure to run a few workshops with team members and stakeholders to make sure your concept meets the criteria that business or developers may have. Six, direction. Once you've checked off all the top five steps, you're only one step away from diving into the actual design work. Based off of the results from all of the previous steps, prioritize and decide on the direction to go in together with your team and stakeholders. Now you're all set to start designing. We've now learned about the eight key areas of the general UX process. Research, framing, information architecture, ideation, user testing, designing, usability testing, and documentation. We also know that the UX process isn't linear, but with the six step UX focus checklist, we were able to quickly figure out which area needs the most attention before you can start to dig into the actual design side of things. And to make things even easier for you, I have added the six step UX focus checklist as a Figma library component below. Feel free to duplicate it, publish it as a library and include this checklist in your projects to help you stay focused on the right things. All right, that's about it guys. I hope you found some value in today's video. And in the next one, I'll take you guys behind the scenes. I'll have you follow along the actual UX and UI design process while working on a project. To make sure you don't miss it or any other videos from Wired to Design, I need you to subscribe turn on notifications and hit the like button below. Until next time, peace.